Okay, so welcome to tonight's uh, lecture. So this is our le last lecture on complex numbers. And we're looking at De Moivre's uh, theorem and we also look at the rational powers of complex numbers. And then we'll, we'll conclude uh, by looking at the roots of a complex number. So hope you've been studying and I'm sure you have ideas on the previous things that we've covered, though I didn't give you an, uh, an exercise to test you. All right, so um, I'll know what to do. I, I, I may send the exercise, which will contain uh, everything on complex numbers that we have uh, covered so far. So uh, let's quickly begin. Let's quickly uh, start. All right, so, so we'll start with the Moivre's theorem. So the Moivre's theorem and the rational powers of, of complex numbers. So in case you've been given something like this, you have maybe, let me say Z is equal to, then you have cos, okay, let's say you have the magnitude of two there, then you have cos, um, cos 30. Okay, let me not use, okay, let me start with numbers so that you understand plus i sine 30. So if this is what you have, and then uh, if for instance, this has been raised to the power three, and then you've been taught to find the solution for this. So what you just do is you raise the magnitude to the power that you've been given there. So we have two to the power three, then open brackets, you have cos 30, this 30 multiplied by three. So meaning you have cos 30 times three, you get uh, 90 then plus i sine 90. So this is what you have. So the final answer will be eight, then cos 90 <coughs> plus uh, i sine 90. So that is what you're going to have. Some applies when you have something like z um, raised to power one over two is equal to, maybe you have um, cos, you have maybe three, uh, cos 30, yeah, three cos 30. Okay, you can have any angle here. Let me say 130, three cos 130 plus I sine 130, or maybe the magnitude here is also three. Okay, let me just do this. And then, okay, I think for the sake of, let's do this. So we have we have um, this, then we have four there, then open close to the power five. Or well, let me just use a small number so that we don't take time calculating. Okay, so we have to the power two. Oh, not to the power two. There's already a power this side. We have one over two. So what you do there, you simply just uh, raise everything to the power two even this side to the power two in order to get rid of this half this side. So your Z will become uh, four to the power two, then open brackets, you have cos 130 times two, that gives 260, then plus I sine 260. So this is what you're going to have as your solution. So in your raise, four to the power four, I'm sure that gives you something like, uh, is, is it 64? Something like uh, 64, I think so. Yeah, so, oh, sorry, 256. Four to the power three is one that gives you 64. So you have 256, this side, and then you have cos, open brackets, you have cos 260 plus I, sign to 60. So this is how you deal with the powers, with um, yeah, powers of complex numbers. Yeah, so let me just show you the, the formula. And so this is what I'm just from talking about. Okay, so this theorem is known as the Moivre's theorem. So and we have examples there from the tutorial sheet. So if you've been given something like this, the first thing that you first 
uh, the first thing that you need to do is convert what is inside there uh, to polar form. You first have to convert what is inside to polar form because if you if you just want to multiply this, you can't manage to say one over two plus half i to the power, I mean half, then times one over two plus half i times one over two plus half i uh, times one over two plus half i. So how many of these times one over two plus half i. So if you've been given this, this is equivalent to that. Now imagine how, how many minutes you're going to spend to multiply this. So this will take you, I don't know how many minutes, some can even go up to how. Yeah, but the Moveo's theorem comes in to simplify everything. So what you just do if you've been given something like this, the first thing is you convert the complex number in the brackets, you convert uh, it to a polar form. So you have something like this. So the first thing when you're converting, you first find the magnitude. So the magnitude of this complex number, let's say this complex number is Z, we say Z is equal to that. So uh, the first thing we find the magnitude of this Z, which gives us um, the square root of one over two, then squared plus one over two squared. So this gives us the square root of one over four plus one over four, which uh, finally gives us uh, two over four. The square root of two over four, which is just the root of two over uh, two, the root of two over two. Okay, so this is what you're going to get as a magnitude. And then after finding the magnitude, you can now find the argument. So the argument of Z is just found by finding the tan inverse the tan inverse of half over half. So tan inverse of half over half is just the same as tan inverse of one, which is just uh, 45 degrees. And of course, you have to check the complex number if it's in the first, second, or third quadrant. So when you check this one, half can be there. We don't have any negative um, component. I mean, yeah, we don't have any negative component there. So all the components are positive. So we expect our complex number to be in the first quadrant. Hence, uh, 45 degrees is the argument. So after doing that, we can now write this complex number in polar form. So our Z will now be equal to, our magnitude is the root of two over two. And then we open brackets, we have of course 45, and then plus I uh, sine 45. But remember this complex number has been raised to the power five. So we raise everything to the power five. So now, how do we do that? So, I mean, how do you find the final solution? So the final solution is what I'm going to write there. So our Z do now be equal to, um, we have the root of two over two. We raise this to the power five, and then whatever is inside there, you multiply their angles with five. So we are going to have, uh, 45 times five. So 45 times five, which will just be uh, 45 times five, which is just uh, 225. So I'm going to have of course 225 plus I sine uh, 225. This is what I'm going to have. And then when you raise the root of two to the power five, you have four root two over, you have something like this. Okay, you can also simplify this. This is not difficult to simplify. Yeah, so on top there, you have four root two because you say root two times root two, you get two. Again, root two times two, another two, two times two, four times root two, you get four root two. And then two to the power five, it should be something like 32. Yeah, so that's what you get. And then you simplify that. That's what you put here. Then you write that. So this is uh, the solution for the first question. Okay. So uh, the next question, you do the same. Or before I go to the next question, do you have questions on the first one? Okay. 
So we move on. So for this one, you first have to, uh, so for this one is simple, it's also simple. You first have to simplify what is inside there. So what is inside there, you can first simplify it. We have one plus I root three, then over one minus I root three. So multiply by the conjugate of the denominator there. So we have one plus the root of three I over one plus I root three. So everything is raised to power 10. So what is down there can be simplified and what is on top can be simplified. So what is on top there can be simplified. This is one times one, you have one, and then one times the root of three, you have root three. So you have uh, plus root three plus another root three, and then, oh, sorry, they are all supposed to have i's, yeah. And then i times i, we said it's negative one times root three times root three, which gives us three. So we have negative three there. And then everything divided by one squared, then minus three. Yeah, so one squared minus the root of three squared in short, it will be plus because uh, I times I will get a minus. And then the minus that is in the difference of two squared, you multiply it with the minus that you get after multiplying I and I, you get a positive. That's why I've written a plus in between there. So this one squared. So on top, we have one minus three, you have negative two, then you have plus, and then two um, have plus, and then let me just do it, okay. Okay, so, and then you have two i root three, then everything divided by one plus uh, three, you get four. So when you simplify this complex number, don't forget that this is raised to power 10. Uh, so this is raised to power 10. So when you simplify that complex number, you get negative one over two plus um, the root of three over two. So you have the root of three over two and then I there. So this is the complex number that you now convert to polar form. When you convert it to um, polar form and then you multiply this 10, the power, the power 10, you multiply it with uh, the arguments that you are going to find. And then you also raise the magnitude to the power 10. So whatever I've explained on this one is exactly what you do on this other question there. Okay, so now if you have a complex number like this one, this one is very simple, uh, question four. This one is very simple, you just say, uh, because it, it's been raised to power six. So it just says um, the magnitude. Anyway, let's first factorize the magnitude there. So we factorize the magnitude, we have the root of three. So you have the root of three there. And then apart from that open brackets, and then you have the root of three and then open brackets, you have cos two pi over nine, and then you have a minus i sine two pi over nine. And then we, we raise this to power six. So we have the root of three, uh, the root of three to the power six. And then you also have this part, you multiply all the arguments inside there with six. So two times six, you get 12. So we have 12 over nine pi. So when you simplify this, uh, three into 12 is four, three into nine is three. So this is just the same as four over three pi. So we have cos four pi over three minus i, sine four over three pi. Then you're done with this question.
So these questions are simple, they are straightforward. Yeah, so when you have a question like this one, you are multiplying this and that. So you first deal with them individually. You multiply these two with all the arguments. Since we don't have the magnitude there, so you just multiply the arguments uh, by 12. You say 12 over nine, that will be cos, um, that will be cos uh, four over three pi plus i sine four over three pi. You have one complex number there. Then this other one has a magnitude. So you raise two to the power five, you get 32. Then open brackets, so we change the types of brackets here. It's two, and then open brackets, and you have five times uh, pi over six. So you have cos uh, five pi over six, then plus i sine five pi over six. So this is what you are going to have. Then from there, we can now multiply the two complex numbers. So how do we multiply two complex numbers in polar form? You multiply the, the magnitudes. This side, this side, the magnitude is one. Then on the other side, the magnitude is 32. So 32 times one, we have 32. And then what do we do with the arguments? We simply just add the arguments. So we have cos, so four over three plus um, five over six. So this, um, so four over three can also be written as uh, eight over six. I want to simplify things when adding. So four over three can be written as eight over six. So meaning when we're adding uh, four over three and five over six, we can just add five over six there. So we we'll get um, eight plus five, that would be 13 over six. So here we we'll get 13 pi over six. And then we have plus i sine 13 over 6 pi. So this is simply just uh, how you do. Yeah, you don't even have to spend a lot of time thinking on how you are going, I mean, thinking about how you are going to solve it. Straightforward. Same applies to this one here. It's also straightforward. You know the magnitudes there can cancel, three and three can cancel there. So you just remain with that. So you just multiply with, uh, I mean, this three with the arguments inside, this six with the arguments inside. And then when you're dividing two complex numbers, what do you do with the arguments? You subtract the arguments, the one on top minus the one down. Yeah, so that's uh, what you do. All right, so. It's as simple as this. Let's now move on to the next. Um, let's move on to the to the next. Um, yeah, let's move on to the next uh, part, which is almost the same thing as what you are just uh, from doing. Yeah. So all these things are straightforward. Yeah. So. I don't know if we can so if we should even solve any question here. Because here what you're just